seated. Brother Jeremy. All right, it's good to be back in church this evening. Had a great service this morning. Looking forward to what God's going to do tonight. Amen. How many of you got a nap this afternoon? What's that? All right. Well, you, Brother Jesse, you know who's going to be alive and, and awake this evening? By those hands that we raised. All right. Do got a few announcements to make. Please don't forget, Tuesday at 630, we'll be having a visitation. And um, we'll be going out to some stores or some subdivisions and go door knocking, something like that. Passing out tracks and meeting people and inviting them to church. You would, if you've never done it before, I want to encourage you to just to come on out and try it. Uh, we're not going to throw you to the wolves, Brother Christopher's not just going to hand you tracks and say, here, go figure it out. We're, you, if you're not comfortable speaking with people, he said, why not? Yeah, good job. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you, man. If you're not comfortable speaking with people, you get nervous about it, maybe you've never done it before, you can just come and, and be a, par- a solid partner with someone, and, they can, and you can sit there and watch them and help them and and, uh, and learn how it's done, but this is uh, something that's near and dear to the Lord's heart, and um, it's amazing what he'll do in your life and through your life while you're out talking to people like this in these times. You run into people all the time, that you, you, and you find out things about people and what God's done for them, and it's a, it's a pretty neat time. I want to encourage everybody to come out for visitation this Tuesday at 6.30. Let's do this. If you're planning on, are you going to try to come? To, to visitation to tonight, just raise your hand. Let's see who's all going to try to be out here. All right, that's awesome. Good deal. All right, there'll be no men's fellowship tomorrow night, and we'll have family fun night on April 30th. That's Sunday night at 4 o'clock. All right. We need to take up an offering. Yes, sir. Sir. Hey, I like that. 10 o'clock Saturday morning for bus visitation, and that's almost like being in, in, in the mission work, right? I mean, that's, and you, it's, but isn't in, in it, Brother Keith, isn't it amazing that some of the things you see God do out there doing all that on visitation? Go ahead. awesome that is true amen I like hearing it yeah don't talk about that you're acting like brother Christopher now shh, shh. now you're acting like brother Christopher up here it's great, but it's hard. <laughs> you can. Let, wait till they come a few times, and then we'll tell them the truth, right? Yeah. It is fun. And even those, in, in my experience, even those hard times in the moment are hard, but in the end, it turns out to be something pretty, pretty special. I've seen God do some things with some young people that... Uh, like Brother Diego, when, when he was around here, it was like, man, what in the world? And now you see him, it's like, what a blessing. you know. So it was hard for a little while, right? But now it's a blessing, and uh, you don't regret it at all. And, and that's, uh, God, God's good to us. We don't want to ever take that for granted. Amen. All right, who are we going to get to pray for the offering tonight? You want to pray? Go for it, buddy. Dear Heavenly Father, we're going to pray for the offering now for everyone home with their grace. James is more...
Ephesians moment tonight, um, Brother um, Brother Jim Hart, he's a um, missionary to the um, military and their families, and he's up at, um, it says Jacksonville Service Men's Center. Um, that's Jacksonville, North Carolina. That's out of Fort Bragg. He's, um, he works with the um, men there and their families in Fort Bragg. And this is uh, scattered out there. There's him and his uh, family and several of the other Marines that he works with and their families. Uh, we couldn't get a video of him, so this is as close as you're going to get in seeing him right there in the middle holding the, is that a Georgia jersey? We'll say it is, huh? All right. Okay. He starts out with John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye asked of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Dear friends and supporting churches, praise the Lord. I can relate to him here. Praise the Lord. My surgery went well, kind of, and the doctor was able to repair most of the damage to my rotator cuff, and I am well on the way to recovery. I missed a few days but was back in the saddle. You don't know about that. Within a week, that was the theme of um, our new manna rally. Back in the saddle, get back in the saddle. But he says, um, I missed a few days but was back in the saddle within a week, so winning on base and teaching the Bible study in the brig as well. I am grateful for those who filled in for me in my absence. Recently, there were seven single Marines and me out on base, so winning in the barracks and following up on Marines that had visited the church. It is a joy to see these men getting a burden for lost souls and doing something about it. As always, when we get them trained, the Lord has them leaving. Carlos was able to lead one of his fellow Marines, Cedric, to the Lord, and now they are both on a ship doing workups for a future development, but not before Cedric was baptized. Brian came to church because of our outreach to Camp Johnson, ELR, whatever that is, class. He and Caleb attended church and then came to dinner that afternoon. I followed up with Brian the next week and was able to help him understand his need for salvation. He was no stranger to church, but he was to God. He is now born again and has a new name written down in glory. Evan and Perry both attended the Bible study in the brig and enjoyed the service. I was able to meet with both of them later that week. Evan was not too familiar with church, but figured now was as good a time as any to see what God had to offer. He found that God had the gift of eternal life to offer and also accepted it. Perry is married and has three children and admitted alcohol was part of the reason he was in the brig. He was religious but lost, and after realizing he did not know how to get to heaven, he asked how he could for sure. He listened and obeyed, trusting the Lord and him alone to save his soul. He's been reading his Bible and is excited to get out and get home to talk to his wife and children about the Lord and establish a godly home. Garrett attended the Bible study on Friday night with Jesse, and after it was over, I was able to talk with him about the Lord. Garrett was intent on listening to the gospel and then was gloriously born again. I call these first names Garrett, Brian, and Evan, and Perry, and all those uh, because he mentions them from week, uh, month to month as he sends a letter and, and uh, asks us to pray for things uh, there at the service center. So uh, he says, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work, John 9, 4. And that's Jim, our missionary Jim Hart to the uh, men at um, Jacksonville Service Center there near Fort Bragg.
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. didn't want heaven without us so jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you. Tore before you, you silence the bows of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no right.
You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we Personally, um, I look at situations around me and I can magnify those things, whether they be good or whether they be bad, whether they be sweet or whether they be hard. I can magnify those things around me and I find myself going to my husband or going to my mom or, you know, worrying about it or thinking about it. And sometimes I need to be reminded of songs like this, that those things may seem big, but they're not. But God is big and he is God alone. And when those things around us, whether they be so great or so hard, when those things around us get really big, we've probably got our focus off. And we probably see those things for bigger than they are, and we don't see God for as big as he is. And I'm thankful that we serve a big God, but time and time again, we can not keep our focus on him in the right way. We cannot see him in the right way. And that's got to be tough for him, for him to see us and say, come Look, see what I am. See what I've done for you. See how I've walked you through these things and what I've provided or whatever the case may be. He's done those things. So many times we just get our focus off of that. And I'm thankful for a big God that's faithful and that's kind. And that when we see those things, um, the things around us magnified in place of him, that he's gracious to show us that and that he's still just as big. Before time began, you are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone, you are God alone, from before time began. Sorry, Romans 7, 7. Romans 
chapter number six. Glad to hear about those saved this morning upstairs. I had four saved. Four kids come in on the buses. Amen. Get saved this morning. We praise the Lord for that. You say, why do you run buses? That's why. Amen. That's why we do it. That's why we want to keep doing it. Amen. Romans chapter number seven. I had a another message out of Leviticus chapter eleven, but I feel like the Lord's put this on me tonight just now and kind of moved my heart a little bit. And uh, so this is what I want to want to look at. Give me, if y'all would, give me James four seventeen also, and uh, if y'all would get that ready. <clears throat> Romans seven fourteen it says, for we know. That the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I... Know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. I'm going to read that again. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. He's saying the will is there, but I don't know how to do it. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. And Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh, the law of sin. And if y'all would, James 4, 17, the Bible says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And we see here Paul is speaking freely, I believe. Amen. He's, uh, in my words, he's just being real. He's just testifying for a minute. He's saying, listen, the things that I that I would love to do and the, and the good that I want to do. He said, I just simply cannot sometimes bring myself to do it. I, the will is there at times and my heart is in it, but I feel like, I feel like that I just can't get it done sometimes. Can I, I don't know about you, but I can be a witness with Paul. Amen. Uh, and listen, I hope I'm not the only one uh, that, that, that would be willing to say tonight that, uh, a lot of the, a lot of times, the good that I want to do, I can't seem to do it, amen. And that evil that I don't want to do, sometimes it creeps into my heart, it creeps into my mind, and man, because it's in my members, it's in my body, it's in me to do wrong, to want to do wrong. And listen, sometimes, sometimes, uh, listen, it just uh, I find myself in this spiral. Sometimes I find myself. In these situations where I think, man, I should do better at soul winning. I should do better when it comes to my Bible study, when my Bible reading. I I, I want to do better. I want to do more. And I want to serve God with everything in me. But it seems like sometimes, every which way I turn, boy, I just drop the ball. I just fail. I can't. Sometimes I feel like I just can't get there. Amen. Amen. But the Bible does say, and God tells us, that we all fall short of the glory of God. Amen. 
and that in us is no good thing, and that, and, and that our righteousness, the Bible says, is filthy rags. Amen. But I'm putting my faith and my trust, just like Paul in verse number 25, I thank God that through Christ Jesus our Lord, that, that I find myself, that I'm able to serve God through His strength and through His power, through His goodness and His grace and His mercy. Amen. We just sometimes, we, I ask myself, why can't I just do right? Why can't I just do right? Sometimes there's days I look back on my day and I think, well, you blew it today. You did a real good job today, preacher. There's conversations that sometimes that I have and I walk away and I think, good job. Good job. You handled that real eloquent. Amen. And it's, and, and listen, if Paul, if Paul, in my opinion, one of the greatest Christians that ever walked this earth can do wrong. Wouldn't you say that maybe we could too? That it's in us to mess up, to drop the ball, to make mistakes. I think, I think though how we respond to these things is what's important. How do I respond when I mess up? Do I try to make it right? Do I try to do I try to fix the problem or do I do I just tuck tail and run and try to try to weasel my way out of it or try to squirm my way out of it and try to uh, try to deny, deny, deny that I ever done any kind of wrong or listen, I listen, I'm telling you tonight that Paul did wrong. That Paul messed up. Paul made mistakes. And listen, for us to stand here tonight and listen, just to act like that we don't ever do any kind of wrong is a bunch of junk, is what it is. It's hogwash. Listen, for us to stand and act like that we never make mistakes and we never, listen, we are going to fail. Amen. I don't want to burst your bubble tonight, but I will, uh, that you're going to make mistakes. You're going to drop the ball. You're not always going to be a perfect parent. You're not always going to be a perfect spouse. And man, I know we're not always going to be perfect church members. Listen, I know that. We're going to drop the ball and we're going to fail. But for us to walk around and act like that we never do, God help us. The Bible says in Proverbs that only by pride cometh contention. Pride. You want contention? Show me some pride. You know, I'll show you some pride, I'll show you some contention. Some backbiting, some tailbearing, some fighting, some arguing. That's where that comes from, pride. Is that not what Proverbs says? Only by pride cometh contention. Paul says, I, he said, oh, wretched man that I am. I'm a wretched man, he said. I don't know about you, that's a strong word. He didn't, he didn't say, yeah, every now and then I'll mess up. He said, I'm a wretched man. And I'm, I'm, I'm willing tonight to lay aside my pride and say this, Brother Douglas, I'm a wretched man. Oh, wretched man that I am, Brother Christopher. And for me to ever dare to walk around just because I'm the preacher, just because I'm the pastor, just because I'm anything and think that I'm something, God help. Because I'm just a wretched man. Because in me dwells no good thing. Just like I preached a few nights ago on that unity between the pulpit and the pew. What kind of a preacher... 
what kind of a preacher would I be if I stood here and tried to edify myself and uplift myself? Look how smart I am. Look at, look at all the big words that I know. Look at all the history that I have studied and know. And I'm, I'm so smart and I'm so eloquent and I know all the big words. I'm nothing, friend. I'm nobody. I'm just a sinner saved by the grace of God that, are, that is privileged enough that God would see fit to call me to preach and allow me to preach. That's all I am. Listen, I can take you right now to where I was born and raised and you'll very quickly see that I'm nothing and that I'm nobody. But I have the ability because of the grace of God. He's given it to me to be able to do anything for Him. What a blessing it is. I don't deserve it. All I deserve is hell. All I deserve is to have my back broke and thrown into the pits of hell. But by the grace of God, listen, He's allowed me to be born again and allowed me to serve Him, placing me into the ministry. Boy, bless His holy name tonight. But I'm still nothing, I'm nothing but a wretched man is all I am. Can I say this without you getting your feelings hurt? You are too. You are too. We're so quick. Uh, I'm just a wretched man. For, for Brother Keith, for me to hold you to a higher standard because you're a Christian would be wrong with me. Y'all agree? You're just a sinner saved like I am. Now, should we try to live right? Should we try to live holy? Be holy for I'm holy. Come out from among the world, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I'll be a father unto you. Listen, he wants us to be separated. He wants us to live right. He wants us to dress right, talk right, act right, walk right. He wants us to do all those things. But the simple fact is, we're not always going to. We should try. There's some areas I believe that we ought to look at that I think that Paul, even in this passage, he said that we should focus on, number one, he said, I try to do right when it comes to my service. He said, for what I would do. Meaning, Paul still tried. Even though he didn't succeed all the time, he still tried to do right. You know what we do sometimes? We don't make it to visitation this week and, or maybe two weeks in a row. And we think, oh man, I can't. I don't ever get to make it. I don't ever get to go. So I'm just, forget it. Maybe that's just not my thing. Or I messed up today. Maybe I'll try to get it right tomorrow. Maybe I'll try to get it right next week. Or maybe, maybe Monday. Monday, I'll try Monday. And it's Paul who told us that daily we should take up our cross and die to him daily. Amen. It's, it's, it's Paul who, the same person writing this is the one that told us that we should try to strive every day to try to do right. To try to get things right. To try to keep things right. To try to do it the right way. And listen, even though we fail and even though we fall short and even though that we're not going to always hit the mark, we should at least try. We should strive to do right. Paul tried to do right when it came to self-righteousness. Paul admitted in even all of his, all of his great works that he was just not perfect. And if anybody, Brother Eddie, has the right to brag, 
I'd say Paul. If anybody had the right to walk around like they've done something, it's Paul. I mean, write half the Bible and survive being stoned, beat, imprisoned. It's Paul. Would you agree? I think maybe he maybe he might be worthy of uh of of just maybe some honor. <laughs> but he sure didn't act that way, as far as far as I could tell from reading after him. If there was anybody that I believe, Brother Nathan, that walked around, that did, that lived a, a Christ like life, he somebody that was always about the Father's business. I mean, he everywhere he went, he was preaching the gospel. He was being persecuted for. I mean, he's the picture of, a, of what a Christian is. But here he's telling us in Romans that I, sometimes I just can't get it right. I'm just not perfect. But somehow, this is what blows my mind, somehow we can walk around like we got it all together. Like we ain't never stepped in nothing. Somebody help me. Y'all know what I'm talking about, those of you who got dogs. We was, get, we was going out of town a couple weeks ago, getting in the car. And Bo, Bo, go down and check the mail before we leave. You know, and I've got a small elephant living in my yard. Yeah, he's massive. And I just see Bo. So much so that he, I mean, his whole body's shifted. So you know it's a good one. And he's like, oh, Dad. <laughs> Getting in the car to leave. Shoes on, dressed. Ain't that how it happens? Listen, I know this is kind of. That's our Christian life right there sometimes. <laughs> Ain't it? We fall into stuff. We slip. We fail. Listen, we drop the ball. That's what we do. And listen, sometimes, sometimes it's our own, it's our own uh, uh, stupidity. <laughs> it's the only word I can think of. It's our own doing. It's our own cause. But sometimes maybe it's someone else. You look at the life of Mephibosheth. Someone else dropped him, made him fall. Someone else crippled him. It wasn't his fault. But listen, sometimes, listen, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and realize that regardless of the fact that whether somebody else caused us to fall or we fell on our own or whatever the case may be, falling is falling. And that we're not perfect. He said, do right. Just do, just do right when it comes to being self-righteous. Having that attitude and that air of self-righteousness. Look at me. I've arrived. Look at me. Look at all that I've done. Look what I've accomplished. Look where I am. Paul didn't act that way. He never even spoke that way. In any way, do you ever see that he even had the attitude of that? It was always, look at him, look at him. Because Paul knew what he was in verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. And I'll be honest with you, church. If when you voted me in, you wanted a perfect pastor, I'm sorry. But you didn't get one. Because I'm not perfect. And I never will be. I'm going to try to be a good pastor. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to give it all I got. I'm going to try to take what little bit of training I have and let the Lord lead me and do what he called me to do. There's things I need to work on. 
I'll say it, there's things I need to work on. If you, if you were to examine my life and look at me, it wouldn't take you long to start saying, well, he needs to do better at this and do better at that. It wouldn't take you long. But aren't we all that way? Let me tell you why people don't come, come back to church. It's because people... People treat them and they set a bar for them that they cannot even get close to. We've got people sitting in this church right now, I would not embarrass you or call you out, but in talking, they're here because other churches they've been to, they've acted like they've set a bar that they can't even get close to. We're human beings. We're going to fail. Prone to wonder. If Paul can mess up, if Paul can drop the ball, if David, man after God's own heart, I'm not condoning sin. You hear me? I'm not condoning sin, and I'm not condoning living however you want to live. Don't get that mixed up. I'm just saying we got to be careful, church. You know, instead of pouncing on somebody like a vulture when they're down, we ought to, the Bible tells me, my, my King James Bible that we that we've voted into our bylaws as God's holy word, infallible, inspired, and inerrant, tells me that we're to restore people. That we're to go, we're to go and help them back up and, and help. Listen, they may not be restored to their position or exactly what they were, but we can help restore their spirit and their heart and their soul and help try to get them at least back on track. But a lot of times we look like that old buzzard sitting on a tree right beside the road just waiting to just get us, get our bite in. Where can we get, where's, where, where can I get my bite in? I don't want to be that way. And can I confess to you, I've been that way. When I was a young preacher and dumb, it's mean, hateful. Just wanted to rip face all the time. That was stupid. That doesn't help anybody. Because why? Because old wretched man that I am. Is what Paul said. Do right when it comes to service. Do right when it comes to self-righteousness. And one thing Paul, you better believe, had it right on was his salvation. Paul knew that even though he was imperfect, that he needed Christ in him. And the only good thing in him was Christ. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. with the flesh the law of sin there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of, the, of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death Paul had that right he said I'm not always going to get it right when it comes to my service I'm not always going to get it right when it comes to my sin. And he said, I'm just a wretched man. But you know what Paul did? He had it right when it came to his salvation. He said, I, I put my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ. And 
I'm, I'm going to fall and I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to mess up. Because I'm a wretched man. But I, I put my trust in Christ. Let me ask you something tonight. What kind of spirit do you have? Do you have that spirit of Paul? That I'm just a wretched man and I don't deserve anything. I don't deserve, I don't deserve the goodness and the grace and the mercy of an almighty God. I don't deserve it. Brother Adam, I don't deserve his goodness. I don't deserve, I don't deserve my family and my home and my children. I don't deserve to get the pastor of this church. I don't deserve to get to do anything. I don't deserve to get to preach. I don't deserve that. I have not earned it. Are you listening? I haven't earned that. But God. Full of grace and mercy. Came by where I was. As a 16 year old boy and saved my soul. Planted my feet. And established my goings. The Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Not you. Don't say, in all thy ways acknowledge yourself. And your accomplishments. And your good works. Acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. It's, it's in Christ alone my hope is found. He is, the, he is my rock, my strength, and my song. My cornerstone, my solid ground. He's my light, my strength. It's not about you. And if we as a church today would get a hold of the... If we would make ourselves smaller and make Him bigger, we'd see more souls saved. And we'd see more lives changed. Brother Tim, it's not about the buildings. It's not about the landscape. Although I think those things are important. I mean, it's God's house. We ought to take care of it. But if we focus on that and not on souls or getting ourselves right, then we're not doing anything. We're just a social club. If, if all of our focus is on ball fields and games and those things are okay I wish we had a ball field amen wish our gym was done but when that becomes our focus and not souls and not the restoration of those that have fallen we've missed it we've missed it can I get a witness? If that's all we're about, go join the YMCA. I mean, they got a pool. You can get a good, a good pump in. Amen. But we need to put our heart and our and our trust and our faith and our service into Him and Him alone. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. ask you this question 
heads bowed and eyes closed. You know, I hit on a few things. I was hit on pride, contention, self-righteousness, sin. And we're foolish and naive if we sit here and act like we don't have any of that in us. We've deceived ourselves. We've, we have deceived ourselves if we sit here tonight and think that we don't have any of that in us. When Paul, when Paul said, when the Lord told us that we're full of it. My question is tonight, are we willing to get rid of it? Are we willing to get rid of it? As he plays, won't you be willing to come tonight? confess to him. Be honest with him. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Not the fact that we sin, but the fact that I have confessed that I'm a sinner, Lord. That what I did was wrong. That I messed up. That I made a mistake. I dropped the ball. Lord, would you please forgive me? Help me not to do it again. I'll be honest, it's in me. Every day I have to try to crucify myself and crucify my flesh. I don't always succeed. Maybe you just want to come and thank the Lord for His goodness and His grace and His mercy. That even though you're just a wretched man, wretched woman, that we are, maybe you'd like to just come and say, Lord, Thank you for not killing me, giving me a chance. Thank you for my home. Thank you for my church. Thank you for my Bible. Thank you that I'm not burning in hell. sometimes sometimes we as Christians get to a crossroad in our lives we come through many many intersections turns Brother Tony Shirley preached a message the other night called bends in the road we come to a lot of bends we come to a lot of crossroads come to a lot of intersections sometimes we make the good the right choice and we go the right way but sometimes we don't sometimes we gotta backtrack we gotta get back to where we were but the simple fact is number one you have to choose to go a direction you can't just keep standing there and number two if you go the wrong way go back go back and pick the right way Nobody says you can't. He wants you to. And number three, when you do go the right way, leave some markers behind you so that the ones coming behind you know that, hey, this is the way. This is the way we go right here. This is the way. The good way. The narrow way. This way. If you see somebody in the ditch, don't just kick them. If you 
You see somebody sitting there and he's wore out, dehydrated. Been sitting there a while. Won't you stop? So what can I do for you? How can I help you get to where we're going? You know, uh, Brother Tony was preaching about that uh, runner. I don't know much about that. But he's preaching about that runner. And he's talking about him finishing and him finishing. But the one thing that stuck out to me was his dad. More than anything. That was a good thought about finishing and all. But I thought about that dad. That's what stuck in my mind. They come out of the stand. He said, I'm going to help him finish. I'm going to see my boy. And listen, and I feel like if maybe his boy would have looked over at him and said, Dad, I'm done. I can't finish. I don't think his dad would have let him quit. I don't know. But I, I feel like he probably would have said, I'll tote you here if that's what it takes. But we're going across that finish line. So many times in our Baptist churches today, we're like them other runners. When somebody falls, we just boogie on by. God help us, church, to not have that spirit, to not have that attitude. And I preached it this morning about Paul finishing his race. If you'll look, he named a bunch of people there with him. <laughs> you know why? Because he cared for sinners. And he had so many people that he impacted. That he just that he just said, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm here. I'm he- I mean, what can I do to help? my best friends in the ministry I won't say his name if I did you know him I remember when we were younger he messed up he fell he made a mistake wasn't married or anything just fell into some sin and I remember I remember him calling me one night brother Keith first thing he said was I'm glad you answered he said because I've tried to call everybody else and nobody wants anything to do with me and he said I don't even know why I'm I don't even know why I'm trying to get back right because I don't think I'll ever be able to do anything again all anybody knows of me is this And this is what I told him. I said, we started together. We're going to finish together. We started this thing together. We're going to finish it together. And I said, if I have to, I'll go down with you. If they want to mark me as whatever, then they can mark me. But we're going we're gonna to go on together. I said, because I know what you are. And I know what you're capable of. And I know the talent that you have. You're not going to quit. I had another preacher call me just the other day. And he said, I think I'm I'm done preaching. That's what he said to me. He said, you know, I think I'm done. He said, you know, I just feel like maybe my calling wasn't even real. And I said, the callings of God are without repentance. And I said, I tell you what, preacher. And I called him that on purpose. I'm not, I said, I'm not going to let you quit. He said, nobody's calling me anymore. Nobody wants me to come anymore. I said, you got a place at my church. Anytime you want. 
You say, what did, what did he do? Did he fall into sin? No. He just hit a hard place. And you know what? I can bear witness with him. Because I'm not always up. I said, you got a spot to preach right here. Doors open. What if I'd have said, you know what, you probably ought to just quit. You know, it, it, you're right, man. You know, I think I think maybe, I think maybe it is time to just hang it up. You say, man, that would have been harsh. But you know what? You know why he's telling me what he's telling me? Because that's what people are saying to him. Because people are telling him, hey, maybe you should just focus on teaching your Sunday school class and not really worry about this or that or preaching. We've got to have a heart, a mind to serve, and a mind to, listen, we've got to have a heart of compassion. Pull people out of the fire. You know, and I, I, I think about that verse and I think you know I think it's twofold not just hell fire but sometimes we get in a fire we get in the fire brother Keith if I see you struggling I want to help I don't want to just walk on by say oh there's just another casualty yeah he should have he should have got closer to God that's what happens that's what happens yeah I figured he was going to fall I figured he was going to mess up yeah I could tell I could tell he is slipping if you could tell why didn't you do anything why didn't you say something why didn't you reach out why didn't you go to him and say, listen, I'm here to help, whatever it is. I'm here. Amen. I don't want to be that kind of preacher. I don't want to be that kind of Christian. At the end of my journey, I want people to be able to say, you know what? I want, a, I, want a, I want a daughter or a son to stand and say, my mama or my daddy is going to church because of this preacher right here. I want, a, I want a kid, I want a young person to be able to say, you know what, my home was better because this preacher told my mom and daddy about the Lord. You know, we, we didn't always do it right, but this preacher always helped us. He was always there for us. It's not all about me. It's not all about you. It's not all about us. But what can we do for somebody else to reach others? Amen? Amen. All right, you can be seated. Let's do our J dollars. Let's do our J dollars. All right, if you're watching this video, you've just watched one of our services here at Grace Baptist Church, and our number one desire is to see sinners come to know the Lord as their Savior. And uh, I'll read something from the Bible here in 1 John chapter number 5, verse number 13. The Bible says that these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is what I like, the most important part that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And that's our number one goal at Grace Baptist Church, is for people to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that they have eternal life through Jesus Christ. The book of Ephesians, chapter number 2, verse number 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. 
you know, that's an that's a to me, those two verses are two of my most favorite verses in the Bible because it, it it's it's a simple plan. For by grace are you saved through faith, that we put our faith and our trust in that gift, and that's the gift of Jesus Christ from God to this world. Uh, you know, the only way that we could go to heaven um, is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He's, it's the only way uh, to have uh, access to heaven is through accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Uh, you know, a lot of people are mistaken today, and they think that, uh, you know, being a good person, attending church, or maybe even tithing or giving money to the church uh, uh, gains them access to heaven. But in reality, uh, the only way that we can have access to heaven is through Jesus Christ, the door. And he is the only way. He said, I am the way. And uh, and I want to invite you today that if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would ask that you would take this time to bow your head and, 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 and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and pray a simple prayer. I'm not I'm not going to give you the exact words to pray. It's it's a prayer between you and the Lord, but I would say that you would just model the prayer after this. Lord, I'm a sinner and I realize that without you I have no access into heaven. Without you I have no way uh to forgive my sins. And Lord, I invite you to come into my heart, forgive me of my sins and become my savior. If you would pray something similar to that and mean it from the bottom of your heart and have full faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he'll do that. He said that he would. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you do that today, we would love to hear from you. If you would, just send a message to our church Facebook page, call us or send us an email, and we'd love to have the feedback and know that someone accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. If we can do anything for you here at Grace Baptist Church, as far as prayer or whatever, just give us a call. Reach out to us. Let us know. If you have any questions about salvation, you can always call our office or reach out to us online, and we'll be glad to help you with that. Thank you. God bless.